I think whisky is in, ingrained in culture in Scotland. Um, it's it's part of our our setup. Um, it's one thing that we can call our own that no one else can ever take away from us. The spiritual home of whisky is always regarded as Scotland. Hi there, I'm Luke, I'm Maltese, and I'm here in Scotland to find out about how one special man and his family followed their passion for great whisky and put Scotland on the map. That man was John Dewar. Join us as we tell the Dewar story and learn why, even long after John's death, Dewar's whisky is the fastest growing, most awarded blended scotch in the world. Today, Scotland and Scotch seem to share a single enigmatic identity, but this was not always the case. One man who was responsible for the rise of Scotch was John Dewar. This impressive building you see behind me bears John Dewar's surname, which is a far cry from his humble beginnings. As you will soon find out, the story of John Dewar is one of pluck, tenacity and vision. We start our story here in Perth, the birthplace of the Dewar's legacy, and we were lucky to get here by car. But the story was a bit different for young John Dewar, who walked 25 miles from his hometown to get where we are standing. The year was 1846, and at the time, Irish whiskey and cognac were the fashion of the day. But John Dewar wanted to get the Scots to drink scotch. So he started making his own blends, and it wasn't long before his product took off. Behind me is where John Dewar was born in 1805. It's where he spent most of his younger days. He was a croft farmer in order to pay for his schooling and he would walk down this hill for three miles twice a day. But it wasn't until the 1880s where Dewar's became a globally recognized whiskey. And this was thanks to his two sons, Tommy and John Jr. They started off by coming back here to the small town of Aberfeldy where John Sr. spent most of his life. Everyone has um, an argument on what the most important bit is, but each part adds flavour and character to the whisky. As far as barrels are concerned, in my opinion, a good barrel makes good whisky, and it's probably the most important part of the process is the maturation. The company was started by my father uh, around 1961, so that's in excess of 50 years now. Tiny village, and um, this distillery was built in 18, but opened in 1898. So, you know, it's part of its foundations, it's really part of the history of this town. And we have so many um, generations of people that have worked here. People love what they do here and have a lot of respect for what we do here. It's a real trade making whiskey, it's a real skill. To think that of our distillers, every single one of them lives within five miles of this distillery 
and also you see the history of the employees here, father, sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters being constantly employed by the distillery. It gives us the, the town a sense of history and a sense of pride to have such a big organisation and a big product, important product to the world, existing within their town as well. And the fact that it's made by such a small country but found in every corner of the planet, sold in over 200 markets around the world, is incredible. It's a very, very skillful job to bring together different malts and a grain to make something consistent and fantastic. We take it um, to Glasgow under the watchful eye of Stephanie, our master blender, and she chooses um, which barrel, which uh, oak we're going to use, and um, she ages it for at least three years one day, um, but mostly she will age it for sort of 10, 12 years and create our lovely Aberfeldy 12 year old whiskey, 16 year old whiskey, 18 year old whiskey, or she'll choose um, to blend it into our lovely jewels. This is the Patili Barn. Um, so the Patili Barn is our water source that we use in Aberfeldy whiskey and in our Dewar's blend. Um, so when the Dewar's brothers found this site, um, you know, this is one of the key. Um, key things that they found to build on. So water, obviously water is one of the main three ingredients because we make whiskey from water, yeast and malted hops. So you have to have a really rich, good water source and a lot of it. Most of us anyway, most Scottish people are very passionate about, about the liquid because it's such a contributor to our economy um, and to our livelihoods. It, it's also delicious, so there is that element. I think we just appreciate the time and effort that goes into making even just something as simple as a 10 year old whiskey. We've come to the end of our journey and we've learned that the single-minded ambitions of one family can make history. As John's son Tommy Dewar once said, ability without ambition is like a rifle without bullets. With plenty of ability and the rare kind of enthusiasm, the Dewar's family managed to gain a foothold in a whiskey industry that was dominated by cognac and Irish whiskey companies and carve out a legacy that would define the true meaning of Scotch. <laughs>